This is the Ernest and Rita 2.0 cocktail. Being a tropical cocktail, it was created on an island, but not the sort of island that you'd expect. This drink was created on the Isle of Man, an island 20 miles off the south coast of Scotland, which goes to prove that you can create tropical drinks no matter where you are. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's go back to the beginning. My name is Drew Fleming and we are here at Kiki Lounge. Kiki Lounge is a tropical bar on a not-so-tropical island, tucked away on the not-so-sunny streets of Douglas, which is the capital of the Isle of Man, um, trying to give our, our people of the Isle of Man a little bit of escapism. So we had a very different experience with COVID living on the Isle of Man, where effectively we had no restrictions, but people weren't allowed to leave the island. So during this time, we had a nightclub and people didn't want to be in a nightclub space. So we actually decided to open a, a bar that was focused around tropicalness and escapism at a time when you quite literally couldn't escape the Isle of Man. And the people of the island really, really responded amazingly to that. There's the term island life and uh, we have a very similar saying on the Isle of Man, um, which is law, which is uh, Manx for time enough which basically just means we're much more laid back than the hustle and bustle of big cities. And I think that can definitely be reflected in our style of service and our approach to bartending and, and hospitality. So today I'm going to be making the Ernest and Rita 2.0. I think sometimes in cocktail bars, we can go a little bit too far with using two obscure ingredients. So this kind of like brings it back down to things that everybody is familiar with. And um, so it's a great way to discover complexity and flavor and actually learn about balance in a drink without you know using outlandish ingredients or things that are really difficult to to source the mezcal carries like the smoke it, it kind of provides like a, a gentle backbone as we use tequila as the main base and the mezcal is simply just like a little you know bar spoon on top and then as well obviously we also have campari which gives it a nice bitterness i think grapefruits they have nice tannic feel to them so the the campari kind of helps lift that this drink is going to be served up so if you don't have a, a glassware freezer then now i would start putting some ice in your glassware but we're going to keep ours nice and chilled and we're going to start with simply just 7.5 mils of mezcal and then after the mezcal we'll go for the main base which is just a uh, tequila which we're going to go for 35 mils and then after that, we're just going to add a little modifier. Uh, we have elderflower liqueur. And we're just going to do 15 mils of our elderflower. And then the Campari now comes in. Literally, literally, literally just a bar spoon. Yeah, just a bar spoon of Campari. So it's about 3.75 mil. Uh, and then we go for the grapefruit super juice. So the grapefruit super juice, uh, it's really easy to make. Um, you just add uh, some citric acid and some MSG to uh, some grapefruit peels. You just let them combine for a couple of hours, just let them sit, and then just add the fresh juice back into the peels and then give it a blend. And then what you're left with is this gorgeous, almost lime strength acidity uh, grapefruit juice that like really is poppy and is almost a little bit savory as well. There we go. And then the last thing is just 10 mils of 2-1 sugar, just to kind of help with the body of the drink. Okay. And all we're going to do now is just shake. Grab your glassware. And then last but not least, just a little garnish is just a little bit of grapefruit over the top. Nice and easy. And there we go. So obviously it's like a, a really easy tropical sipper. It's got the, the salinity uh, and the playfulness of like a, a margarita, but then it's also just kind of got that, like that the dryness uh, and the bitterness of um, a Hemingway daiquiri. So it kind of like meets in the middle, like it's super sophisticated 
um, but it's also like a like a, a very a very playful drink that you could easily have a have a few of. For me, the biggest thing is the use of the mezcal, and obviously mezcals can be so different in their flavor and their their makeup. But for us, like a lot of mezcals, you know, people just think it is a smoke bomb, but that actually, because we're only using 7.5 mil of it, we, we need something that is kind of heavy hitting um, because it's it's a great introduction into the, the, the category of, of mezcal as well, just because, you know, you're only using just a small bit sparingly. Um, so it doesn't dominate too much. The fun thing is you can play with the the amount of the, the mezcal compared to the tequila you use. Say, you know, you could do three parts tequila to one part mezcal if, it, if it's something that's a little bit more gentle. But if it's something that's, you know, quite, quite harsh and heavy hitting, then you could drop that to five and you can kind of find a happy medium. But it's it's really fun. And it's actually crazy how much the drink changes as you as you kind of substitute in different different varietals. For all our juices in house, we actually use super juice. So for our lime, our lemon um, and then our grapefruit for this drink as well, we use a method that essentially all you do is you peel the skins of the limes, the lemons or the grapefruits. You peel them, you add citric, malic, and tartaric acid, which are all just very easily available to buy in food grade quantities uh, just online. And then you basically allow the lime peels or the lemon peels to soak in these acids. And you leave them for a few hours, two to four hours is usually the sweet spot. Similar to what sugar would do in making an oleosaccharum, you then just add water to these peels uh, and these acids, and then you just blend it. And it combines everything up. You blend it, you strain it, you bottle it. And what you end up with is just delicious juice that's kind of like a little bit oily as well. But then for us, the most important thing is we're actually getting a, a much greater yield. Um, so for instance, for lime juice being a tropical bar, we, we, we go through a fair share, but we've actually managed to reduce our consumption down uh, from, from seven or eight cases a week to, to one and a half just by moving to this super juice method so it's cost effective for the business but it's also better you know if you we, we can't grow limes in the isle of man so like the the uh the, the life cycle and the journey of, of limes to make it all the way to us is intense so if we can make that last a little bit make it go a bit further then then uh we're doing the, doing the right thing and we're very much of the opinion that everybody should be able to understand and be familiar with pretty much every ingredient that's on on the venue you obviously we're from the Isle of Man, where there isn't a huge cocktail culture and the scene is very much in its infancy. And we're trying to be the catalyst for that, but it's still very early doors. So um, our menu can is, is, is pretty much designed around things that people are familiar with, but kind of taking them on a journey. An attitude we've tried to adopt in terms of creating tropical drinks, but in a not so tropical environment is don't discount what's around you as well. We have a number of drinks on the menu that actually marry overtly tropical things say like passion fruit uh, with things that we find in our, our local environment like seaweed you know we're an island we're surrounded by so much seaweed and so much dulse uh, so we actually have a drink on the menu uh, that perfectly marries passion fruit and seaweed and it's delicious so i think you can kind of really make waves and and and, and learn more if you try and tie tropical and tropicalism into your environment and then you can find something quite quite fun and quite original